Meet Flor Jacqueline. On the outside, she looks like your typical teenager, full of energy, self-conscious about her looks, <laughs> likes to hang out with friends and draw. But her life story is atypical. She's an American citizen, born in Long Beach, California, and brought to Mexico when she was four. She was abused by relatives in Mexico and has spent about half her life in a casa de hogar, which is similar to what in the U.S. is called an orphanage. It's what passes for foster care in Mexico, loosely regulated group homes that get most of their funding from foreigners. Now 18, she is reclaiming her U.S. citizenship. Her ultimate goal is to go to college in the U.S. and work with animals. Because I see that there are many more opportunities over there to get ahead, because here it seems like life is much more difficult. Flor's case is unique. Maria Dolores Pérez Pombo has studied immigration and orphans at Tijuana's College of the Northern Border. What is rare to see are kids who are U.S. citizens living in an orphanage or in Mexico by themselves because someone from the U.S. will usually claim them. Flor has lived most of her life in and around Ensenada, Mexico, and was frequently abused by her mother and grandmother. She said her love for animals came because she viewed them as a refuge. She could talk to dogs and cats, and they would not yell back. At age eight, neighbors called the authorities when they heard disturbance at Flor's house. They found her bleeding, and she was taken to a hospital for treatment. She was removed from her family and taken to the first Casa de Hogar. Attempts at reunification with her family failed, so she was placed in a second home and later a third, which she escaped from. Flor seemed destined for a tough life on the streets. One of her friends got pregnant when she was 15. But at an age when most people heading down the wrong path don't turn around, Flor changed. More than anything, I saw my family and how they were, and I said, oh no, I don't want to be like them. And it was that, more than anything, that inspired me to change. At age 16, and still a ward of the state, Flor was placed in Rancho El Faro, where she still lives. The orphanage is in the Valle de Guadalupe, surrounded by vineyards and olive trees. Rancho means ranch in English, and that is how this group home is run. They raise animals and crops to eat. They wash their clothes the old-fashioned way. The new kitchen under construction will burn wood because it's cheaper than buying propane. About 35 orphans live here. The majority are teenage girls. Most homes in Mexico would not accept children older than 12. Flor has spent many years in an orphanage, and she always knew that she was a U.S. citizen. But because she was a minor, she needed her mother's permission to cross over to the United States. Her mother never gave it to her. But now that she's an adult, she is on her way. Yeah. The director of Rancho El Faro says Flor uses her rough childhood as motivation. She focuses on what she wants, and that should help her break the cycle of abuse and dependency that she grew up in because it hurt her growing up in an orphanage. To help Flor reach her goal, an Orange County-based charity called the Corazón de Vida Foundation has taken a special interest in her. Employees helped her obtain her birth certificate and have driven her to the U.S. consulate in Tijuana to obtain her passport. But why take such an intense interest in one orphan from the hundreds the foundation helps? Maricamen McFarlane Hernandez says Flor is a special case. Flor Jacqueline has a strong talent. She, is a, she has a big, big heart. And she knows exactly that she wants in the life. The foundation wants to do more than help Flor claim her citizenship. The plan is to have her spend the summer in the United States learning English and then attend college in the U.S. in 2013, after graduating from high school in Mexico, where she gets good grades. <laughs> Flor's goals go beyond school. She wants to help her family, despite the challenges that poses. Flor wants to reunite with her mother and support her siblings, three brothers and a little sister who all live in Mexico. Despite growing up in an extremely dysfunctional family, she feels an obligation to be there for them.